We've known Ryun is uh, a bit of a crazy bastard, to put it nicely. But just to see an episode like this, where it's not just like, it's a simple moment of like, well, he's about to drop kick someone in the head, and well, that could definitely be the death of them if someone doesn't get in between the drop kick of death. He's someone who will go the extra mile. Unlike a lot of characters who threaten to go the extra mile, Ryun will go the extra mile, and it's generally worse than sometimes I think I envision. They're literally in a freezer, it looks like, based on the, the breath and seeing it, and the fact that you're pouring water on someone already freezing and being very cold, adding the water, adding the bag over the face and pouring it, there is some, uh, some torture going on there. And it feels like with that dragging scene as we end the episode and transition to the credits, we're just at the start. It's gonna get far worse before it gets better, and honestly, I have no idea if Kay's gonna reveal the name or not. Yes, we have the whole concept of, like, if she's in danger or if something, like, happens with her whole bullying angle, our boy will be there, even though he's now kind of disconnecting himself from caring if the class gets higher or not because he no longer has the threat of blackmail and expulsion hanging over his head now that he knows that he's kind of bulletproof right now. So he did agree that, you know, he made a promise, he'll commit to the promise, but right now it's just a matter of will he get a message sooner rather than later because I'm very curious to see how far he'll go and if she'll truly be willing to die to keep the secret in her grave sort of a thing. Because right now, it feels like we're building up to this season ending in an explosive way, probably Ryun knowing who it is, or at the very least, he probably knows who it is still, but just like, you know, getting the confirmation, that 100% clarity, and then season three could then be the, okay, you know, he tried to escape basically caring too much, but now that he's done so many things that has pissed off Ryun, he has 100% clarity that it was him, you know, that could be a pretty intense season, all things considered. But there's just so much uncertainty, and just, I love the fact that when it comes to the people who stand behind him, whatever he does, whether it's threatening, whether it's literally committing these acts, these people never come across as they agree, but they, like, recognize his way of doing things will get the job done, and if we don't have to get our hands dirty, then I guess all's well that ends well sort of a thing. But... They did such a great job, both with the voice acting directing, I thought, I think Ryun is just an incredible casting choice in general. He comes across as like an arrogant prick, but he also has this element of murderous aura that you know that it's not just him being like, oh, I can punch real hard. No, this is the type of dude who would break your skull if he threatens you and you continue to piss him off, as seen by the dropkick of death. And then when it came to Kay and just her, her pleading, right? There's not much you can do in that situation to make it feel believable that you don't know any information. She knows damn well she's caught behind a rock in a hard place, so what can she do other than stand her ground thinking it can't get worse than being tied up to a chair? And once it gets worse than being tied up to a chair, all you can really do is feel helpless and scream your lungs out and hope someone hears you. Just the way they went about the vocal directing there was just completely spot on, but honestly, the thing that got me was actually more of the silent treatment from some of the people standing behind him as he was doing these atrocities and just seeing how visibly upset they were but not caring enough to stop it sort of a thing. And that was such a beautiful scene because this was kind of his episode, right? Like we end last week, okay, Aino's not going to be doing much, he's disconnecting, so what's going to be the thing that pulls him back in? Well, it's probably going to be Kay, given that he still is going to keep his promise, he said, but he's kind of disconnecting. With Rune already kind of honing in on him, and obviously her being the easiest target, that seemed like the likely bet. But even with that said, you never quite know what he'll do, even if you have the general idea of where he's going next. Look at the first half of this episode, him storming into the class and then having two very buff dudes kind of stand off, but very different in ways. I mean, you have Rune who's kind of like the... Um, He's the macho mafia boss type who's willing to do whatever it takes. And then you have just someone who in the middle of like, if this was any other person, they would be either cool, calm, and collective like I know, or shitting their pants and trying to get out of this with logic. And here he is brushing his hair with the mirror and the mirror just gets smashed on the ground. The suspect's list is getting smaller and smaller. And even though he's getting so close in his mind anyway, to get Aino to expose himself. Nothing has really worked out, so now he's going to basically the ultimate extreme, and like he said, this school 
you know, there's not a lot of rules that prohibit these types of acts. Like, the fact that what they initially did to set up this location, oh, that's just a prank, it's a minor punishment, who cares? And if she goes and says something, I mean, it's one word against another's, and it's just, the way the school works, the way it operates with rules, it is so toxic, it really is about survival of the fittest, and like, the worst place you would ever go to school, it feels like. Because this type of shit is even easier to get away with so many atrocities than already, you know, he said, she said sort of a thing. But leave it to Classroom of the Elite. I mean, the first half of the season has been pretty damn fantastic. I loved returning to this world after so long. But it really feels like the second half is way better. It's just, now that the setup was over, now that, you know, the paper shuffle and everything, like, just so much about the arcs that we're dealing with right now is so interesting. And what gets me is that it doesn't feel like this season's gonna end resolving this conflict. It kind of feels like it's gonna end really starting the conflict with the mask coming off, and both sides knowing that there's no escape from the other's gaze, and most importantly, the other's actions. And it'll be interesting, right? Because for someone like I know, He's actually grown to really enjoy his little group of friends. I mean, I said in the comment section last week, it's oddly wholesome that this man just wants a normal life now. That he has a way in his mind that he can get out, leave everything to Horikita, she can do her thing, and honestly, he just trusts that that will be fine, and he's just going to go with his little study group that he generally seems to enjoy. I mean, comparing where he started, like, his whole, like, reason is to try to figure out what a normal life is with this school, and he gets thrown deeper and deeper into these conspiracies, which is anything other than normal, right? But the group of friends he has here are legitimately normal groups of friends. So, it's really interesting to see how he's becoming more human, not in this, like, this skyrocketing way, like, he changes overnight. The dude can emotionally stare into the distance seeing a murder take place, it feels like. But the fact that he's like generally happy and content to go with these people and just celebrate fun little things, it's pretty cute, I have to admit, for a dude who is thrown into the deepest of conspiracies and just can navigate it without a second glance. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen, how he'll be able to navigate probably this situation, or if it will end with Kay revealing the secret and then he'll confront him afterwards, I'm not sure. Either way, it's explosive, it's exciting, and it's pretty damn traumatizing, all things considered. And as I've said, I think the whole idea of how they escalate drama in Classroom of the Elite is one of the biggest entertainment values that this show has going on. I mean, it's something that you say, like, how would a school like this actually function in the real world? But that's the brilliance of anime, right? We can take those extremes and make it even more crazy. And I think they do such a good job with this season in particular, with the dramatic directing, whether it's the, like, when they're in the almost refrigerator room, right? The fact of how they use lighting there compared to the more bright scenes when they're confronting and everything. They just know how to get visual directing completely spot on, and it feels like this season is just the appetizer of where season three is gonna go, and given that I think the season has gotten progressively better as it's moved on, the fact that season three we know is in the pipeline, we're getting it next year, I mean, it just feels like it's gonna get better from here. And as a fan of Classroom of the Elite, that's all you can hope for and ask for at the very least, or at least match the quality you've enjoyed. But so far, it feels like it has gotten progressively better, and based on source readers' comments, I don't think it's letting up anytime soon. But thoughts, feelings, and theories on where it might go next week, leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new around here. So next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.